Nehemiah chapter 4, 1 through 6. And I felt this was appropriate since we're in the midst of a building project right now. And it came to pass that when Sabalat heard that we builded the wall, he, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of heaps of rubbish which I burn? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Then Nehemiah began to pray. He said, Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, verse 6, and the wall was joined together until the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Amen. You may have your seats on today. And that's what we're going to talk about, a mind to work. We, right. We're trying to build this temple. We're trying to make an impact in Inglewood. We're yes, trying to raise $25,000. Well, guess what? In order to do it, you have to have a mind to work. On, Nehemiah is the author of this book. The theme of Nehemiah is godly leadership, cooperation, and opposition to success. And the key words of Nehemiah are, please repeat after me, distress, distress praying, praying, work, work the, book, the book, weeping, weeping joy, joy, and service. And That's the book of Nehemiah right there. Distress, praying, work, the book, weeping, joy, and service. The book of Nehemiah takes place after 70 years of Babylonian captivity. Jeremiah prophesies to Israel because of Israel's constant proclivity to sin. God now has to judge them uh, because sin cannot reign in the presence of a holy God. And he judges them by sending them a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. He puts them in, in the midst of Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar carries away approximately 50,000 Jews into a Babylonian captivity. And this is where you get Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says over in Psalm 137, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We sung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it, for those who carried us away captive asked of a song, and those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, sing unto one of us one of those songs of Zion. And they said, well, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I can preach if you help me on today. But even though they were in a bad situation, does not mean that God would not move within their midst. So God did miracles among them, and that's where you get Daniel and the lion's den, and you get the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. They prayed to God for 70 years to deliver them, and God did deliver them after 70 years of captivity. And that's where you get Psalm 126, where it says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dreamed that our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And they said among the heathens, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. He who continually goes out forth weeping, bearing seed of sowing, shall doubtless come again and rejoicing with them, bringing his sheaves with him. Him. God delivered them out of Babylon. They had a great time. God, they shouted on their way out. He delivered them out of Babylon, but the only problem was when they got back to Israel, they did not, they discovered that they did not have much to go back to. Uh, their homes were destroyed in need of repair. The walls of Jerusalem were broken down and the temple was destroyed. And so this meant that they had no place to live, they had no place to worship, and they had no defenses. Bless you. Nehemiah is the cupbearer for King Artaxerxes, and the king notices that Nehemiah is depressed. And so the king finds out from Nehemiah what's going on in Jerusalem, and he tells him, I want you to go back and send me a report and tell me what needs to be done. Nehemiah begins to survey the situation and decides that the walls, the first thing they need to do is the walls or the roof needs to be rebuilt. And the reason they were able to do it was because they had a mind, or it's time to have a mind to work. Let me tell you something. I used to pastor a church, and I want to let you know, I, I can't stand lazy people. I, I have frustrated people who don't want to do anything. Yes, I, I can't stand lazy people. I can't stand lazy churches. I can't stand lazy pastors. I can't stand lazy singers. I can't stand lazy musicians, I can't stand lazy choir members, I can't stand lazy directors, lazy ushers, and lazy deacons. 
Christians. The reason I can't was is because that you will you will never have a fulfilling marriage if you don't work at it. Now, you'll never be great at anything if you're lazy towards it. You will never be a great parent if you're lazy towards raising your children. Now, you'll never be a great student if you're lackadaisical towards studying. Now, and you will never master anything if you don't have the energy to be better. Now, I, my father was a musician and he was working with a group called oh, oh, Miracle Revival Center in Bellwood. And I never forget after he got through teaching them, he said, you know what? It's not that y'all can't sing. It's just that y'all too lazy to sing. Now, there's nothing like dealing with somebody who has all the potential in the world, uh, but they won't bring their gifts together and, and bring it forth and, and bring it out and then begin to use the gift that God gave them. Oh, can I get a witness on today? Yes. It says over in Proverbs 6, 4 through 11 in the King James Version, give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Uh, deliver thyself as the roe from the hand of a hunter and as the beer from the, the deer from the hand of the fowler. Uh, go to the ant thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, uh, which have no guide, overseer, or ruler. Provideth her meat in the summer and gather her food in the harvest. Uh, how long will thou sleep, O sluggard? Uh, when will thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Uh, so shall thy power become out as is one that travaileth uh, uh, and, th and thy want as an armed man. Now listen to it from the message translation. It says, don't procrastinate. Uh, there's no time to lose. Run like a deer from the hunter. Fly like a bird from the trapper. Uh, you lazy fool. Look at the ant. Uh, watch it closely. Let it teach you a thing or two. Uh, nobody has to tell it what to do. All summer it stores up food. At harvest it stockpiles provisions. Uh, so how long are you going to laze around around doing nothing? Uh, how long before you get out of bed? Uh, a nap here, a nap there, a day off here, a day off there. Uh, Sit back, take it easy. Do what you know what comes next. Huh? Just this, you can look forward to a dirt poor life, huh? poverty, your permanent house guests. Huh? In other words, those who are lazy and procrastinate huh, will be eaten up by poverty. Huh? And I don't necessarily mean a lack of money, huh? but I do mean a lack of accomplishment, huh? a lack of fulfillment, huh? and a lack, lack of happiness. Huh? People who are not busy in life, moving towards some type of goal, huh, are more susceptible to Alzheimer's, huh? disease, and dementia. Huh? Have you noticed that it's getting late in the evening huh? and the sun is going down? Uh, and people who we thought would be here with us are not here. Uh, and so now the Bible says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. Uh, because there's going to come a time when no man can work. Uh, oh yes, can I get a witness on a day? Uh, what is the vision that God has given you? Uh, what are the gifts that God has given you? Uh, what are the creativities that God has given you? Uh, and what are you doing now in this season uh, to make the vision come to pass? Uh, oh yes, uh, Isaiah 52 says, awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Uh, put on the beautiful garments of Jerusalem, oh, the holy city. Uh, uh, what God is saying now is that you need to find some passion. Uh, and you need to get up and do it. Uh, it says over in Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Uh, Whosoever thy hand findeth to do whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. Uh, for there is no work, nor device, or knowledge, or wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. Uh, in other words, it's time for you to get your get the uh, payday is coming. Uh, uh, get your time in. Uh, because payday is coming after a while. Huh? You have to stop making excuses for why something can't be done. Huh? I was watching the movie called Pearl Harbor. Huh? It happened, Pearl Harbor ha happened on December 7th, 1941. Huh? And after the Japanese had attacked, uh, FDR decided to meet with his generals and his admirals. Huh? And he said, listen, we need to now make a decisive victory against Japan. Huh? And so his leadership told him, huh, Mr. President, it can't be done. Huh? They will attack all the way up to Chicago uh, before we could do anything to attack them. Uh, he said, FDR said, listen, I don't understand this. Uh, why do I see defeat uh, in the eyes of my countrymen? Uh, now, one thing you have to understand about FDR was, uh, is that he had polio. Uh, he couldn't walk. Uh, he was always in a wheelchair. Uh, and when y'all saw him walking, he really wasn't walking. Uh, he had braces 
underneath his clothes, huh? and he always had someone standing next to him. Huh? And so what he was really was doing when he would walk, he would throw himself forward. Huh? And that's how he really walked. He was really confined to a wheelchair. Huh? And he said, you know what? I used to be a strong, virile man. Huh? And I was also very arrogant when I was younger. Huh? I wish y'all could have seen me before I was in this chair. Huh? But now I think I begin to understand why God put me in this chair. Huh? And so he backed, he pushed himself away from the table. Huh? He was in his chair huh? and he began to move himself huh? and push himself up. Huh? He almost stumbled back huh? and someone tried to catch him. He said, get back. Huh? He, he pushed himself and pushed himself. Huh? He stood up huh? and he locked his legs in. Huh? And he said, don't you ever tell me huh, what can't be done. Huh? Oh yes, huh? if you want up, you can get up. Huh? Or stop feeling sorry about a handicap. Huh? Oh, the devil is alive. Huh? There are people who are president of corporations huh, who have GEDs. Huh? There are people who are president of yeah. corporations huh, who don't even have the D. Huh? Oh, you don't hear me on the day. Huh? Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Huh? Senator Ted Kennedy said at his brother's funeral, huh? some people dream things and say, why? Huh? My brother dreamed things and said, why not? Huh? Let me tell you something. Huh? You should never back down huh, if God is backing you up. Huh? Oh, yes. Huh? Let me say that again. Huh? You should not back down huh, if God is backing you up. Huh? The issue really is, is how bad do you want it? Huh? How bad do you want success? Huh? How bad do you want to be free? Huh? How bad do you want to see the vision come to pass? Huh? Someone in this room is saying that I'm only one person. Huh? Oh, my God. Huh? But understand this. Huh? God has a way of using little huh, and making much out of it. Huh? Oh, yes. Huh? All Moses needed was a rod in his hand to part the Red Sea. Huh? All David needed was a rock and a slingshot huh, to get the victory over a giant. Huh? All Elijah, oh, I feel like preaching now. Huh? All Elijah needed was a cruise of oil and some flour to bake a cake that outlasted the famine. Huh? All Elijah needed was a three-year drought huh, and a cloud the size of a man's hand to make it rain. Huh? All Jesus needed was a little boy huh, with two fish and five loaves of bread huh, to feed 5,000. Huh? All Jesus needed huh, was 12 disciples to turn the world upside down. Huh? All the Holy Ghost needed huh, was 120 in the upper room with the Holy Ghost. Huh? And 3,000 will be saved that day. Huh? All Jesus needed huh, was someone with faith the size of a mustard seed huh, that would move the mountain. Huh? All you need huh, is you. Huh? Oh, can I get a witness on the day? Yes, huh? yes huh? it is not that God can't do it, huh? but we need to partner with him. Huh? God will often call upon us to do things that intimidate us. Huh? Oh, yes, that are bigger than us huh? to get victory. Huh? It is at these times that we have to lean hard upon God. Huh? Reverend Schaefer, what if it doesn't work? Huh? Well, let me ask you a question. What if it does work? Huh? God can do anything but fail. Huh? Oh, yes. Huh? And so when my first point is, huh? my first point is, number one, huh? you have to work despite opposition. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Huh? Oh, yes. Huh? Away with thinking. Now, let's get rid of this little crazy theology huh? that if God called you to do something, it's going to be easy. Huh? Oh, yes. Because you got to understand that the devil huh, does not want the vision to come to pass. Huh? And a lot of times, the confirmation that you're on the right track huh, is that you start having trouble. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Huh? So I mean, you quit stuff too easily. Huh? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The devil comes up on you, huh? and you back up off the devil. Huh? Oh, yes, and then you, you try and do this over here, huh? and then you, you back off and you get a little resistance here. Huh? Oh, the devil is a liar, huh? and then you get a little trouble over here, and then you back up. Huh? When you going to stop backing up off the devil? Huh? Oh, my God. Huh? What do you think the Holy Ghost is for, and, and power is for, huh? and the blood of Jesus, and, and all that? What do you think all that is for? Huh? All those are weapons. Huh? The weapons of our warfare are not called. But they're mighty through God to, to the pulling down of strongholds. Huh? Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Huh? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We had to do a play with Lisa one time. Huh? And let me tell you now, this, this, you can't work with Lisa and be weak. Huh? You, can't, you can't work with Lisa and be weak. Huh? You, you're going to be strong or you, you, you got to leave. Huh? Uh, by the time she get through de dealing with you, you're either going to go somewhere crying huh? or cussing. Huh? And then she's going to outcuss you. Huh? But you're going to get the job done. Let me tell you now. Huh? You're going to get the job done. Uh, yeah, she came in here doing the shut-in and, and said, come on, let's get this thing done now. Let's, let's move it. Let's pray. Huh? 
Huh? Oh, yeah, pastor looked at me and rolled his eyes. Listen, let me tell you something. Huh? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Huh? But we, by the time she got through with us, huh? by the time we got through with the play, with, with the play, huh? we all knew our lines, huh? and we got up and did what we had to do. Huh? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Huh? You need to be around somebody who sharpens you. Huh? You need to be around somebody that makes you better. Huh? You need to be around somebody huh? who pushes you towards excellence. Huh? Oh, can I get a witness on the day? Huh? And listen, and being pushed, huh? and being shaped, huh? and being sharpened huh? is hard, huh? but it has to be done. Huh? And so when we now look at this text, huh? you, had, you had these little people now huh? coming against the vision. Huh? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, you had Sambalad in them, and, and Tobiah. Now, let me tell you about Tobiah right now. Huh? Tobiah was an Ammonite. Huh? Oh, yes, y'all yeah, remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Huh? Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? The Bible says, huh? oh, I feel like preaching. Huh? When Lot, Lot and, the, and the family came out of Sodom and Gomorrah, huh? oh, yes, Lot's wife turned around, huh? and she turned into a pillar of salt. Huh? Oh, yes, I said, there's a problem in backsliding. Huh? You ain't got nothing to backslide to, huh? so you need to keep your eyes focused. Huh? But she decided to backslide and turn around huh? and turned into a pillar of salt. Huh? But Lot and his daughters made it out, huh? and they got to a cave. Huh? And you got to be careful when you come up with these little plans that you ain't prayed about. Huh? You, need to, you, need, you need to pray You need to pray before you plan. Huh? Oh, yeah, you need to pray before you plan. Huh? And so what happened was they came up with this little plan, huh? and they decided to get their father drunk. Huh? And when they got their father drunk, they slept with their father. Huh? And that's where you get Moab huh? and Ammon. Huh? Oh, yes. And so and th th this, this Tobiah is an Ammonite, huh? and he's a child of incest. Huh? Oh, yes. And he's now coming in now, huh? trying to stop them from building. Now, one thing I can't understand about Tobiah is huh? these people are trying to rebuild their lives. Huh? What are they doing to you? Huh? And a lot of times, you're going to have people huh? who frustrate the vision huh? because they're watching people work towards a goal. Huh? And since they ain't doing nothing with their lives, huh? they're going to do the best they can huh? to mess up somebody else's life. Huh? Some people are only at peace huh? in the midst of confusion. Huh? And it's at that time you, you got to you got to tell Tobiah, you got to get about here, huh? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, huh? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, huh? And I'm gonna say it in love, huh? You have to get up out of here, huh? Oh yes, you coming inside City of Faith, huh? And gonna try and wreck the vision, huh? And speak against the vision, huh? And try and undo everything that the man of God is saying. The devil is a liar, huh? This is now the time where we need to pull our resources together, huh? Pull our minds together, huh? And work towards the goal huh? that the man of God has given, huh? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, huh? And it's as you move towards the goal huh, that you see a fresh anointing start coming upon you. Huh? You start seeing a fresh strength that comes upon you. Huh? You start seeing fresh creativity come upon you. Huh? Number two now, huh? you have to pray for success. Huh? Uh, when you get home, read Nehemiah chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. Huh? He says, Hear, O our God, huh? for we are despised and turn their reproach huh, upon their own head huh? and give them as prey in the land of captivity. Huh? Oh yes, huh? we have to start going back to prayer. Huh? I feel sorry for this 21st century church because huh? this 21st century church ain't ready. Huh? They aren't ready to do business in the spirit huh? for we wrestle not against flesh and blood huh? but against principalities huh? and spiritual wickedness in high places. Huh? And that's how come you have to have the helmet of salvation huh? and the breastplate of righteousness. Huh? You need the helmet of salvation to cover your mind. Huh? You need the word of God to cover your mind. Huh? And you need the breastplate of righteousness huh, to cover your heart. Huh? Some of you got all this little heart stuff. Huh? Oh yes. Huh? And you keep following your heart. Huh? And if you keep following your heart long enough, huh, you're going to lose your mind. Huh? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Huh? Every time Bible study is called, you need to be up in here. Huh? Because you have a whole bunch of stuff huh, attacking your mind. Huh? And you need to pray to God. God, I need you to keep me. Huh? Lord, keep my mind. Huh? Keep my feet. Huh? Keep my heart. Huh? The stuff that's trying to stop me from moving towards the goal. Huh? Good morning, city of faith. Huh? May the Lord bless you real well. Huh? But as I take my seat, huh, I want you to understand huh? you have to move past, work despite opposition, huh? pray for success. Huh? And the last thing I want to tell you is huh? you will finish what you started huh? because you have a mind to work. Huh? Oh, yes. Huh? Having a mind to work huh? simply means that their minds was willed to do huh? what needed to be done. Huh? You have to decide to be blessed. Huh? You have to be, decide to be prosperous. Huh? You have to decide that you're going to do it. Huh? Their heart was filled with passion huh? with what needed to be done. Huh? And their bodies, huh? their hands, 
their feet, their eyes responded to what God said in their minds. So we built the wall, and the wall was finished the 50th day of the month in 52 days, which should have taken them a long time. They did it in a short time. I'm here to let you know that God spoke to me and said, expect unusual favor. What took others 10 years is going to take you 10 months. What took other folk 20 years, he's going to do in 20 minutes. God says, your time under God is now. Don't wait on a season. Your season started before the foundation of the world and before March 24, 1975 even happened. God already outlined your success. Line up with what God said. Don't worry about spectators and critics because God is going to make up an open show of the devil on your behalf. Success is in front of you. Success is behind you. Angels are on either side. Goodness and mercy is following you. And God said, do it. Work it. Make it happen. And I'll shut the lion's mouth. Somebody say yes. Yes, Lord. Be confident of this thing. God will finish what he's begun in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let these years be the best years of your life. Die empty. Die fulfilled. Make it happen. Make it happen. Some of you are waiting for prophecy to come to pass. But certain prophecies you have to make come to pass. Certain prophecies you have to make you have to make happen. The Bible says, I give bread to the eater and seed to the sower. God only blesses folk who eat, and God only blesses folk who sow. Now is the time to sow it. Sow it. Sow it. Sow it. 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 The Bible says, you'll reap if you faint not, but you can't reap what you ain't Sow some praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Give God praise before it's happened. Help is on the way. Anointing is on the way. Promises fulfilled are on the way. God, 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 God. He's going to make it happen. No more of hearing prophecy and just shouting over the prophecy. We now have to take prophecy and bring it into reality. And when prophecy is brought into reality, then we can really dance. You see, yeah, we're going to dance before we get it because we already have it. But once God brings you into possession, that's a whole nother dance. Stand to your feet. Take someone by the hand. I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. I pray for every vision that's in this household. I 
attach my faith to theirs. I rebuke the hand of the enemy. I rebuke the day of evil. Cast the devil out of your mind. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus, send the money. Send the favor. Send the grace. Huh? In the name of Jesus, huh? right now, huh? heal that home. Huh? Rebuke the foreclosure. Huh? In the name of Jesus, huh? I speak huh? the promises huh? of God. Huh? In Jesus' name, huh? it shall huh? come to pass. Huh? Everything huh? you pray for, huh? everything huh? you've spoken, huh? the blessings of the Lord, huh? I yay huh? and amen. Huh? We believe God. Huh? Jesus is here huh? and we can have huh? just what we want. Huh? God, huh? just don't start huh? with the roof, huh? the work huh? in this neighborhood. Huh? Don't stop huh? with this roof. Huh? I just completed my first year of graduate school. class started, I was driving my car, and the ball joint disconnected from the car. Was late for my first day of class. Had to find money to take the bus. And didn't know how to take the bus there. I had never taken the bus there before. Just because something bad happened as I went forward in the vision did not mean that God didn't call me to go back to school. Psych your mind yes, wow. with opposition. Yes, wow. yes. You, you, to, to a certain point in the relationship, you gotta dig in. Yes, right. I ain't leaving, you ain't leaving. We're gonna, uh, yeah. we're gonna make it work. Yeah. Yeah. You can't walk away from a job because you have problems on it. Yeah. Can't do that, can't do that, can't do that because you keep backing up off of stuff. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on. I was in special ed until I was in eighth grade. <laughs> I just, I just finished the school year and, and, and it's it, it, 2.8. Two points away from a 3.0. Oh when you work at it, and you praying, and you binding the devil, and sometimes you gotta put oil in your, on your head while you're studying, and say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, I will get this. If you just attach your faith with some work, faith without works is dead. You attach your faith and have the tenacity to make it come to pass. Nothing will ever stop you. And the reason why Satan is trying to stop you is that he knows if you develop the mindset of taking no prisoners, you develop the mindset that you're going to what God said you're going to be, that you're going to live holy, that you're going to do this, you're going to save money and do this. He knows he can't do nothing with you. The devil is more afraid of you than you are of him. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. How many of y'all needed to hear that this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God for Elder Nash. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated real quick. Bow your heads. If you're here today and you need to make a decision for Christ, you've never made a decision for Christ, and you want to know who Jesus is, you can allow God to be a part of your life today. 
if you just let him in. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you're here today and you want to be born again, you can be born again. If you're here today and you say, I need a church family, and I hear the Lord speaking from this place, and I want to be a part of the city of faith, where there are people praying all around you for somebody who may need to be saved, may need to make a decision to have a church family today. He's so available to you. All you have to do is believe on him and you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands. Give the Lord a praise this morning. God's good, isn't he? Amen. I pray that you are blessed by the word. Amen. Amen. Some of the ministers are going to be ministering over the summer, so I'm looking forward to being blessed and being fed in Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord in giving this morning.